Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. Hello, I'm Dave. Appreciate you listening to our podcast, The Songwriter Connection. This is episode five now in season three, which has been a whole lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying it as much as, as we are here. Uh, we've got a great guest today that uh, I'm happy to introduce you to. Um, you know, we've talked in this show in the past about my distaste for genres, uh, putting in people people in, in little boxes and saying, you're this, you're that, you're country, you're pop, you're, you know. I really respect artists that um, are DIY, for one, that's do-it-yourself, right? They do the whole thing, and that mix and blend the genres and find their own musical uh, define their own musical uh, genre, if you will. And our guest today is just like that. And, and uh, I absolutely love him. He, he, he combines folk, punk, uh, pop, and rock all together. I had a chance to observe him up close uh, and personal yesterday. Played alongside him at a, a club down here that we call the 12 Keys, uh, just down the road from us. He is Matt Pless. Matt, welcome to Songwriter Connection. Cool. Thanks. Good. Good to have you here. Thanks, Dave. Now we first met at a, uh, a house party, which uh, which are so popular these days, and uh, our good friend Sherry Sherry Carmody uh, at her place, and uh, we both played there, and and, I, and you blew me away. Uh, you and Sherry go back a little bit, huh? Mm-hmm. How did you guys meet? Um, I was uh, playing down at the Commodore Grill, uh-huh. um, place we both play a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I I just happened to be in town around New Year's. I forget what year. I had this like I had a date with a girl for New Year's in Nashville, so I mm-hmm. naturally drove twelve hours to go do this one date. Yeah. <laughs> but um, while I was wow. <laughs> while I was here, I decided to do the Commodore, and uh, Sherry happened to be in the crowd, and she um came over after the uh, set was done and was just like, "Hey, I love yeah. your song." And, you know, I know she's there. a she's a super fan. She loves uh, what you do. Yeah, she's great, as we all do. And she's she's really turned us all on to you uh, in the songwriter community here in Nashville. So. She's been like my Nashville uh, house mom. Yeah. <laughs> well, last night you had your whole. I, I tell you, you had a lot of uh, fans in the audience with the Matt Plesh t shirts and everything, <laughs> singing along to every every song. You know, it was cool to see. It was good to watch you perform. With something else, yeah. How about a little taste of that? I know you brought your guitar today. We uh, we like to play music live around the dining room table on the Songwriter Connection podcast. It's one of my favorite things when an artist can bring their instrument and play for us live, uh, so to speak, because we tape this in advance. Um, so Matt Pless is our guest, and Matt, show a little bit of your style, what you're all about uh, here on the Connection. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start with something fast and upbeat. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> um I played the first song I played last night. So okay, uh, this is called Nero. Um, it's about uh, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down, <laughs> in the metaphorical sense. <laughs> yeah, the metaphorical sense. Okay, unless you have a time machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the dawn of desperation, when the peasants are beheading every emperor with a golden crown. First they'll stand with one another, then they'll turn against each other under thunder on a battleground. With their torches, tar, and feathers off to round up all the witches on a rail to run them out of town. In a kingdom that's collapsing, I'm relaxing on the ashes, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down. You can dance around the fire with the hand that holds the power, or go cower with the gagged and bound. While the vultures count the profits and the hawks are launching rockets in a garden growing mushroom clouds. You can storm the ivory towers, but the knight in shining armor's days are numbered on the body count. So I'm laughing up at heaven in the arms of Armageddon, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down. You can find me playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down. You can find me playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down. Where the tricksters and the grifters and the rich carnival barkers sell their sulfur to a spellbound crowd. 
buying tickets to the promise of a better world to come and left with nothing when their hope runs out. There's a lifeboat overflowing on a rising violent ocean in the darkness where the sailors drown. But I'm smiling on an island by the tidal wave horizon playing fiddle watching Rome burn down. If you're screaming in defiance, are you David or Goliath when the riot rages all around? Call it vengeance, call it justice, call it progress, call it selfish, either way I'm gonna have my doubts. Maybe I'm just causing problems thinking I know how to solve them, so for once I'm gonna shut my mouth. Waiting silent in the shadows like a devil at the crossroads playing fiddle watching Rome burn down. You can find me playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down. You can find me playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down, playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down. While the charlatans are shouting propaganda on the mountain, truth is spoken to an empty house. If you ask for my opinion, are you trying to make a difference or find something to complain about? When indulgence and consumption leave a landscape of destruction where it's far too late to turn back now, I'll be moving on my own way down the existential highway playing fiddle watching Rome burn down. You can find me playing fiddle watching Rome burn down, playing fiddle watching Rome burn down. You can find me playing fiddle watching Rome burn down, playing fiddle watching Rome burn down. Matt Plast is our guest. This is the Songwriter Connection Podcast. Very Dylan-esque. Huh? Was Bob Dylan a big influence to you? Never heard of him. Never? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it this way. <laughs> Was folk music a, a big influence to you? Uh, yeah, no. Um, I, I, yeah, Dylan was Dylan's a big Dylan's influence guy. back in the day. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, John Prine, Bob Dylan, uh, John Prine, um, yeah. Towns Van Zant, uh, a oh. lot of underground songwriters that like no yeah. one's heard of that I've just come across on the road. Yeah, um, poetry. My mom read poetry to me when I was a kid a lot. Uh, oh. You know. Um, <laughs> Hip hop artists like you know like Eminem, yeah. Biggie, and Tupac, all that stuff. Yeah, I just like good words, good ly- or good good ly- good lyrics, good ideas, and good melodies. You know, yeah, you, they definitely come out in your song your songs. They they definitely do. Thanks. You know, let's take that song for example. You you, you wrote you uh, played that last night um, and uh, first song out. And like I said, we had people singing along with you. Um, tell me about the idea of that song and in 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 the deeper meaning if there is um that's the first one sherry heard too that she came over to me about that's why i thought i'd play it too Mm -hmm. um but uh i don't know like i kind of when i write songs i kind of uh it's not like i don't really just sit down and like write usually it's like Mm -hmm. i'll just be constantly thinking of stuff and going through life and you know i'll think of an idea or something will pop in my head and then i'll like keep it there in the bank and then when i sit down to write i'll grab that out of the back of my head if it sounds Mm -hmm. like it's the time to put it somewhere and that song was like this whole thing right i heard the saying uh or the phrase uh playing fiddle while rome burned is like this like um, i guess metaphor for uh just not sitting back and not giving the crap during times of crisis because Mm -hmm. you can't do nothing to fix nothing because it's just going off the rails and uh you know um, I've written a lot of songs that are uh, politically conscious and stuff and socially you conscious stuff over yeah. the years. Um, mm-hmm. And um, some of them are more positive. And, you know, if you hang out uh, long enough in, uh, you know, activist scenes and stuff like that and do, do the whole change the world thing, sometimes right. you get to these points where you're just like, oh, I can't do anything about it. It's just, it's just hopeless. Uh, and that was one of those songs that, like, was in the moments of that where I'm just like, I don't know how you're ever going to get to a place to fix these things. So it was kind of this like tongue in cheek joke sort of thing of like mm-hmm. playing fiddle while Rome burned, you know, like uh, Nero yeah. uh, supposedly played fiddle while Rome burned. It's like this idea of just laying back and I, it I can't change it. So uh, I'm just going to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like just sort of uh, this. It was a kind of tongue in cheek uh, song about that whole concept of just like, well, what can you do? Mm-hmm. Might as well have fun while you're going off the cliff. And it's and it's <laughs> it's it's really interesting. Um, in, in that today that we're ta- I have to say this publishes April twentieth, so uh, you could be listening on April twentieth. But we we've, we've recorded this um, on February twenty fourth. Uh, this is the the day after uh, Russia uh, invaded Ukraine, and they had been threatening for for months. And uh, last night. 
Uh, the missiles and the bombs flew and boots on the ground, the whole thing. We seem to be at war. We're not sure exactly where it's going from here. Uh, and then I hear a song like that that you play. Um, do you think that um, you, there's a certain amount of, of apathy here? Um, um, and this is just your opinion, you know? I wrote this song like six years ago. So yeah. <laughs> at, at that moment, there was a. It's less. It's like I feel like everyone has all kinds of feelings. But don't you feel it applies today? Oh yeah, it can apply. Uh-huh. I suppose whenever someone feels something. I mean, uh, uh-huh. at this point, uh, I don't feel apathy about what's going going on right now with, with that whole mm-hmm. thing. But uh, you could apply this song to other situations in the world today where you may feel apathy because you're just like, well, this is just out of control. And we can fix yeah. that. But I don't think about that specific situation you're referring to. I would apply. I, w- I would apply it as an apathetic mm-hmm. reference to that. No. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose if someone takes well, it did, that way, I guess, good, I guess apathy was a, it is too strong a word. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people uh, are, are the, the feeling. I think from well, some people um, is that you know that's way it's happening way over in another part of the world, and how is that going to affect me? Well, you know, other than the stock market <laughs> and the stock, gas prices rising, you know, it could affect them. It, a yeah, a big time. But how, you know, I I can't really. Uh, affect it from here where I am and uh, you just kind of wonder I don't know I, it's you know, it's interesting to me here's a song that's written six years ago that can be applied to what's going on right now so um, and that's what I love about songs that's what I love about music um, and music too I think has its way of, of healing too and, and getting us through times like this don't you? oh yeah totally I mean yeah that's what I like. I mean, I always like songwriters that. Uh, uh, one of the things I did like about Bob Dylan was that he's very ever evergreen. Like it can yeah. kind of be listened to a hundred years ago or a hundred years from right, now. Right. And uh, that's one thing I always wanted to do with my music is have it be something that could be uh, looked at at any time yeah. in history. You know, that's always been a goal, huh? Yeah, that's been a thing. I, w- yeah. I want my music to be around long after I'm gone, and at least I mean everyone's will be, but I, I hope mine yeah. is noticed still. You know, well, I do too. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about how it started for you. What, uh, how did you get interested in music? When did it all begin? Um, I was at a gas station uh, in Memphis, and there Mem- was this uh, one-legged like hobo dude sitting in front of the gas station. He had a guitar, and like he was strumming stuff. And I saw him when I was walking into the gas station to get some coffee. And like he like looks over at me, he's like, "Hey, man!" He's just like, <laughs> he's just like, "Do you play music?" And I was like, "No, I don't." He's like, "You look like a musician." And I was like, "Really?" And he was just like, "Yeah." He's like, "You know what?" He's like, "Take this guitar." He's just like. I want you to have it. And I was like, really? He gave you a guitar? He gave me this guitar right here. Wow. That guitar. And he looked at me and he said, I want you to have this. I think you need to play music. And so I was like, okay, I couldn't even play guitar yet. And then this hobo dude gave me his guitar. And then like I took it home, never saw him again. Next thing you know, I just started writing songs. Oh my God. It's kind of a magic guitar right there. <laughs> That's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I played <laughs> <laughs> I played in a punk band when I was in high school. <laughs> Way less interesting, um, but um, <laughs> but that's a great story. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I would have just kept it there. I don't want to lie to you. But <laughs> I'm pretty naive. It sounded like a great story to me. <laughs> we ought to write a song about that. <laughs> it should be a song about that. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I played in a punk band, and like you know, I always wanted to do music and stuff. I like yeah. I like the Monkees and the Beatles when I was growing up, and I yeah. thought that would be something that I would like to do. And I used to write songs when I was in third grade. I used to copy them from like the Monkees when I used to watch them on TV as a kid, oh, like eight God. years old. Yeah, and I used to uh, I used to write them on a piece of paper, and I would sing them like acapella in front of the class every Friday. The teacher would let me do this, and I that's cool. Yeah, it was. I don't remember what I I, I remember the the one hook was the only hook I remember from all of it was a. Uh, Knock once if you love me. Knock twice if you hate me. If there's someone else, don't knock at all. That's the only thing I remember from all these songs in third grade. But yeah, I guess that's when it started. Then uh, I took off like actually like, really seriously. I guess when I was like 17, did my punk rock stuff, and uh-huh. then the uh, the whole Dylan Troubadour Guthrie hobo thing started in I guess 2005 um, for you yeah yeah. and mm-hmm. I would say that was when I, my punk band broke up and I was like you know if I'm going to go down in flames or uh, shoot for the moon I want to have it be on my own so it's my responsibility either way mm-hmm. and uh, it took uh, I got myself a, a songwriter cabby cap and uh, got got in my van and drove to New York City and wow. uh, you know, from where Baltimore Baltimore yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah and that's when the acoustic stuff started was in, in you know 2005 after the punk band broke up yeah uh, i actually started listening to dylan uh earlier than that the dylan story is really generic but i'll tell you because it's funny um it was like the day after 9 11 happened right uh-huh. and, um i was like i want to hear some like political stuff <laughs> <laughs> and i was like what's political you know what's what's out there these days because 
even then, like, there wasn't a whole lot of current stuff that I knew of that was really relevant to that kind of, like, you know, yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I know Bob Dylan's supposed to be somebody who does that. And mm-hmm. So I went and grabbed my dad's Dylan record from the basement, <laughs> took it up my room, twisted up a joint, uh, put it on and listened to it. And I was, like, <laughs> smoking weed and just like, oh, my God, I want to write lyrics like this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's uh, how I got into all that. And then I was like, I really want to write lyrics that are... I, you gotta kind of put that out in the universe, and you know the, the wizard of the subconscious answers you and says, "Okay, you want this? I'll hook you up." And then he helps you get it going. Yeah, throw it out to the universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a believer in that. I yeah, really me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So your dad was in radio. You were saying before we went on the air. What um, What did he do? Is, was he a, a jock or? Um, my mom and dad met at a radio station. Um, I don't know. What it, my dad was a. Um, he ran the. He was wasn't it? I think he was a jock. I'm not sure. It was a blues radio station in blues. Baltimore. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Um. Uh. And you know, my mom I think worked in like I think one of the offices there. But they met they met at a radio station. And mm-hmm. my dad uh always he started his own radio station after nice uh, that which was the heavy metal station in the 80s. It was a kind of DIY thing that got really big in Baltimore and got an FM signal and it was the only real FM radio station that was heavy metal in the early 80s before it really blew up. Wow. And uh so. Uh, I remember going down to the, the, the DJ booths and stuff when I was in, a little, little little guy and uh, just hanging out with the DJs and, you know, watching how all that worked and listening to heavy metal. and the, that I grew up around music and radio and stuff. So mm, That's great. Yeah. So music was in your blood, basically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they met radio stations. So. <laughs> yeah. Did, and, was your dad a musician, too? Or? Uh, no, my mom plays a little bit of guitar, oh, but my, mm-hmm. my granddad made radios as a profession. My dad oh. put music on the radio, and I make the music that goes on the radio, but now the radio doesn't exist anymore <laughs> except in podcasts. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 crazy. We've talked in the past about the relevance of, of radio on this podcast. I'm not even gonna go into that right yeah, now. It still got its place, but it's it still has its place, right? I mm-hmm. think people are just discovering more of the new music on uh, on um, on the internet. I'm just uh, a smart ass sometimes. Like, <laughs> I like that about you though. <laughs> cool. How about you pick up that uh, guitar the hobo gave you and uh, <laughs> metaphorically speaking and, and play us another song, man. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna play an unreleased song. Good, you've got uh, a new record coming out, don't you? I, I do. This isn't on it, but I just, no. I just love this song so okay. much. Because right. it's, it's, you know, it sounds like a hundred-year-old song that I wrote a couple months ago. On the other side, we'll talk about that new record, okay? Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right. Uh, this is called Ivy Juniper. Um, this is my favorite song that I have. Okay. Born on a runaway boxcar train Crowned with a halo of daisy chains Second hand holes in her denim jeans Queen with a lucky ace up her sleeve Have you heard about that girl With the bandit boots and the cowboy smile? Call her Ivy Juniper She's a highway child, pretty misty eyes Rugged and rough with a diamond shine Sweet and sassy like moonlight wine They call her Ivy Juniper The rambling love of mine Off like the derelict wind she goes Rocks like a ramshackle rodeo Lips like the kiss from a honeycomb Bag full of tricks and a heart of gold Never met a girl like her She's a coin flip mixed with a cyclone spin Little Ivy Juniper With her pockets filled with the perfect crime One of a kind on a cloud nine high Laughter painting the countryside She's Little Ivy Juniper, the rambling love of mine. Can't forget about that girl with her soul exploding like sundown fire. Wild Ivy Juniper She's a pistol living a slingshot life Free as a bird in the western sky 
passing by like an exit sign. She's wild ivy juniper, the rambling love of mine. The rambling love of mine. Yeah, Matt Plesh, rambling love of yours, huh? <laughs> yeah, she's all over the place. <laughs> we got to take a little break, but when we come back more with Matt Plesh, we're going to talk about his new record, okay? You're listening to the Songwriter Connection, connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. Matt Blast is with us, and he's a DIY artist uh, out of Baltimore these days, right? And uh, in, you just you'll come into town and you'll play like five gigs, and uh, you've got fans all over. Uh, but you you do a lot of you did that rambling kind of song there before, and that's kind of what you, you've, you've toured all over, all over the states, into Europe. You've shared the stage with some really big acts, Maroon Five and Arlo Guthrie. Uh, what a journey you've had, huh? Yeah, it's been a trip, you know. I mean, yeah. Life's a trip. Uh, <laughs> That's cool, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what? let's talk about this new record. Um, when is it coming out, or is it out now? Because, again, we're talking, we're April, we're in the, the uh, April 20th at this point. It's uh, it's coming out um, in May. In May, um, okay, so next month then. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you won't have it yet in April, but it should be out in May on vinyl, and I think... I'm on vinyl too. I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do uh, a lot of vinyl. I mean, the, hanging out in the punk scene, people dig the vinyls. Oh yeah, um, but big uh, again. Yeah, mm-hmm. love vinyl myself. Yeah, it's funny. Well, that's 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 unique for you because usually folks around your age that I see at mm-hmm. shows like, let me get the CD, and the young kids are like, let mm-hmm. me get the vinyl. So it's kind of like switched around, which yeah, is odd. It has <laughs> been. Yeah, yeah. No, I take the vinyl any day. Yeah, uh, me too. Grew up on that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it comes out in uh, in May on vinyl, and I think actually March on digital. Okay, and um, it's uh, a mix of kind of I did like a, more like a kind of a rock uh, rock thing with this one. Uh, there's some acoustic stuff on it, mm-hmm. and some there's a song that's got some country uh, hints too, and uh, there's a lot of like you know punk rock fifties. Vi- it's a lot. Like I said, you know, I just kind of different influences. Eh? Yeah, I mean, you'll mm-hmm. hear it. it my whole thing is like if you if, if you write a song that sounds good naked, you can dress it up any way you want, and like it's always oh, going to be great. You know? You know, that's so much truth in that. You know, it's so right. If it's, if it's a good song, if it's not a good song, you can dress it up any way you want, and it's, it's crap. Still yeah, crap. yeah. Like, you're you polishing got, a turd at that point. Exactly. Right. That's my whole thing. Is I just want to write songs that like you know you can sing them while you're in the shower with no instruments, and like people will still be like, "This is a good song." Like yeah. finding that like I don't know what it is. I mean. Some you could probably say there's like uh, some mathematical road to get there, but like I mean, I, I like to think there's a little of that mixed with a little like some like pixie dust, and you get mm-hmm. that thing that makes that that little soul in the in the song that just you know gives that sort of like otherworldly uh, energy. I don't know how to explain it, but there's just yeah. something I feel in the back of my neck when I hit that that magic lost chord, you know. Ah, you feel it in the back of your neck. Yeah, yeah like, just cool. like just like you just know it, you know. Yeah. So when you uh, when you start to write a song. Um, are you the type that that writes uh, with the guitar in your hand, or or does it start with a a lyrical idea that you start jotting down? Uh, I can start any way, really. I mean, I like I said, I was, that that playing fiddle, watching Rome burn down song. I had carried that like idea of that one line in my head for like two years. Wow! And then finally, I was like, you know, I'm going to sit down and work on this one. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I did that, you know, I also had a couple lines that ended up being in the verses just in the back of my head and in notebooks and stuff. And once I got the melody, I just kind of started putting it together like a puzzle, you know, putting the, I'm like a geek with it. Like I like, yeah. I like make, it's like a puzzle. You, only you have to make the pieces. And then once you make the pieces, like you can put them together. Like songwriting for me is like 50% like left brain, 50% right brain. It's like the right brain is where it's chaotic and you get the ideas from just like, you know, running around the country, like, you know, partying all the time, like, you know, just like living life, like going to different places, hanging out with different like girls, whatever. And mm-hmm. like you get all the ideas that just pop in there through the chaos. And then like when you sit down and sort of like apply that chaos to the order of like, you know, construction on paper, it's like that's when the most zen moments for me are kind of like when I'm putting those two together and then, uh, you take the uh, the uh, the more like logical part of your brain and take the chaotic part of your brain and organize it on paper so it all fits. And then when it's done, you're like, boom, that's what I'm here to do. And then you go back to trying to like survive. 
<laughs> that's you know it's so cool because that's what it's like for me too. It's like it's like a, a put working a puzzle. Yeah, you got all these pieces and you're trying to make them fit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they don't. They they become other songs or they're parts of other songs. Uh, totally. So that's interesting. That's what I like about this show: the nuts and bolts of of songwriting. So we call it songwriting connection. Yeah. So that's that's really very cool. Now you did a song last night at Twelve Keys. Um, you know, it, it kind of it had that to me. It reminded me of. Uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues by uh, Bob Dylan, that there was a lot of pieces, a lot of parts to this song. And it was rapid fire. And it was just one piece of gold after another. Boom, 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 boom. And there were uh, some of your fans sitting in the audience that knew every line. And I was just uh, amazed. I was just like, it blew me away. Thanks, man. Um, and you know the song I'm talking about. Yeah, when, when, the, when the Frayed Wind Blows. When the Frayed Wind Blows, which I have on a CD of yours, actually, uh, from that party that you did. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to hear the story behind that, and, and I'm wondering if I could talk you into playing that one, too. Yeah. Because I'll that play. is a, an interesting song. Yeah. yeah, I'll definitely play to it. To say the least. Mm, you want to hear how it started? Yeah, writing? I do. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, uh, it's a bit lengthy. I'll try to condense it. Um, That's right. Unlike the song itself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but I don't know. I was, um, once again, I was just kind of rolling around. I think I was in Mex- New Mexico on tour and I was sitting on a mattress somewhere and I, this line came into my head that was, we'll change the world with flowers or we'll change the world with guns. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Wrote yeah. it down, lived there. A couple other lines like that popped through. Um, you know, uh, just, there was these little, like, I just was collecting lines that didn't have any home, but I was like putting them in like my backpack, you know? And then, uh, I guess, uh, like I said, I spent a lot of years in like the DIY punk scene around a lot of politics and like you know all things like that and like um, all that. I, I was at Occupy Wall Street down in Zuccotti Park. Like there was a lot of that that was just kind of like uh, building up in me. And yeah. uh, I was in New York in 2015, and I was staying in my brother's apartment for free. Um, so I had all the time to just like do nothing and write. And uh, I remember the first line of that song started with uh, um, I, I, I saw someone write on Facebook. Uh, a post that was like, the revolution is just an endless meeting. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was interesting because it was sort of like, when you go to like, you know, uh, things like Occupy Wall Street, like I would go to some of the meetings and stuff uh, uh, to discuss like uh, action and stuff. And it did seem like sometimes they went on just forever with people just kind of like, talking and nothing really getting completely like resolved. Right. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting way of like, <laughs> like kind of tongue in cheek. I'm a very tongue in cheek guy. So things like that <laughs> kind of made me like, go. <laughs> so like, but I, I, I had this line. I was like, is this, I'll start this song like this. Is this a revolution or just an endless meeting? And then it got into this whole place of like thinking uh, uh, how like, you know, can you have sanitation and liberation at the same time? Because all the places I would go to play punk shows and like radical houses are always the kitchen sink was a mess of dirty dishes and flies and stuff. And I was like, you know, like, I thought that was funny. So I was just yeah. like, I had this line that was like another savior on a soapbox who looks like they needed a shower. It was this whole like thing that anyway, those like stupid lines like that turned into like when the freight wind blows. And I dumped all those lines and started like just building off of is this a revolution or just mass confusion is which it ended up being that way and i just went i stayed up for two days and just wrote it straight and like um so you were obsessed right yeah Yeah. i was just like in a place and i just was going and going and going just like paper everywhere just like chain smoke and the whole mess like uh (laughs) and you know it finally got down to the very last i just needed a good line for the it was all done except for the line that was the hook refrain which is uh when the fury of the frayed wind blows and I didn't have that. And I was like, I got to think of something really good Mm -hmm. for this to wrap this up. And I must've walked around in New York, just zoning out for like four days, five days. And then one day I was just like, when the fury of the frayed wind fits great. And then it was done. So I don't know. I think it was just, I didn't really feel like I had control of what I was doing after a while with it. It just kind of was coming out, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, there wasn't an intention of, I'm going to write this political, like, you know, opus. Uh, It was just kind of like, it just kind of grabbed me and went. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's really a cool song. And I do love your tongue-in-cheek style. It's, it's really Thanks. something. And your voice is very unique, too. Uh, you know? Somebody said, I forget it was, like, if you're going to tell someone the truth, you better make them laugh or else they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Voltaire or, like, I forget, I don't know, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> After a while. <laughs> well, pick up that guitar and let's, let's have a taste of that. that. Not a taste. I want the whole thing. This song is absolutely incredible. Follow, if you will. It's a full course meal. We could <laughs> post the lyrics somewhere, you know, so people can see. Okay, this is called When the Frayed Wind Blows. Matt Bless on the Sunrider Connection. <laughs> Grab your poncho. <laughs> <laughs> It starts 
starts with an explosion Do you end it with a bang? First the whistle started blowing Then the guilty finally hang There's a storm on the horizon And the water's on the rise We're watching history repeating With the change in times The figureheads keep talking But they're buried in the sand Everyone is pointing fingers Everybody plays their hand The fix is in the game This rig, the pawns are polarized You either pick a side Or think outside the picket lines I wonder, is this a revolution Or just mass confusion When every voice is trying to scream The loudest for equality While we argue strategy, culture and philosophy People die in city streets All paved with blood and poverty Powers with a chosen few Desperation's just a tool That agents of corruption use To keep the jails and prisons full Diamond pockets lined with profits Earned from broken lives Misled to pledge by one discrimination Under God I'm saying Stop the world I wanna get off Everything's on fire And it's falling apart So if we can't turn back Can we change the course When the fury of the frayed wind blows The preachers sell salvation to the faithful on their knees. Some prey upon our need and want for something to believe. And some have spun the doctrines, holy guides to paradise. To justify injustices and centuries of genocide. Surrender to your temples, to your altars or your shrines. The weapons used by shepherds so the sheep will keep in line. Conflicting congregations thinking only of themselves. If that's the path to heaven, hate to see the road to hell. I'll tell ya, they take a vision, make religion. Cause division, keep you vacant and complacent And dependent on a system by creating ways to separate Utilizing class and race Prejudice perpetuates and keeps monopolies in place Trickle up or trickle down Stack or spread the wealth around Someone's hope is running out while fortune fills a bank account Empty promise politicians pander to the poor While there's money used for funding phony wars on foreign shores I'm saying, stop the world I wanna get off cause they're loading up the bull And they're dropping the bombs The propaganda feeds to the narrative drums When the fury of the frayed wind blows The criminals in Congress, they ain't got no ground to stand They're building walls and borders all around the stolen land A legacy of liberty, that's how the story goes But conquerors rewrote the past to suit the status quo So is it institutions or the state of humankind That leads to some exalted over thousands left behind They'll push it to your limit, but in turn they'll push their luck Cause sleeping giants riot when they finally woke it up Because they're buying your silence with those shiny advertisements They lie and cheat and steal and tax your habits So you'll finance what they hide away behind the scenes Cover over underneath Population exploitation victimized by vanity Faces in a magazine Pictures on a pixel screen Set a lofty standard that disintegrates your self-esteem Raised to chase a plastic dream Red carpets and limousines Blinded and distracted by the flashbulbs of celebrity But just beyond the limelight after fame has run its course They'll throw you to the lions While a sold-out crowd will roar I'm saying Stop the world, I want to get off Cause there's bodies lying, breathless, bleeding, piling up They shook the bottled rage, now it's bound to erupt When the fury of the frayed wind blows You can think yourself in circles, but the answer's never clear Is there safety with surveillance? Is there freedom without fear? Unravel and untangle all you thought you understood And question everything until you question why you should We'll change the world with flowers, or we'll change the world with guns We'll plant a seed or dig a grave before it's said and done But if we come together all for one and one for all Resistance rises up, sure as an empire will fall So I'll just push towards a future, may it crumble for the better Where tyrannical oppressors are but shadows will remember No judgment based on color or your lover or your gender Dismantle older models so they can't be reassembled But the day the tables turn your way Watch out for a twist of fate Careful not to stumble and become the very thing you hate Seek out something comforting Search for something innocent But you'll never have those eyes that look at life that way again So you can take the high road Nothing ventured, nothing gained But you'll fight fire with fire when you're going down in flames I'm saying Stop the world, I want to get off Cause we're at each other's throats and now it's choking my heart And we can burn the earth or extinguish the torch When the fury of the frayed wind blows
Matt Blanche, the fury of the frayed winds blowing on the Songwriter Connection podcast. That song take a lot out of you when you perform that? Man, uh, just about what energy. Six minutes worth. <laughs> <laughs> you need a cup of coffee or something? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, go- <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, that is just unbelievable. That's just a, you know, that's a masterpiece right there. Thanks, man. You, 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 you. How long ago did you write that? How long ago? Yeah. 2015. 2015. Mm-hmm. So you've been playing that in your sets for, for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I play it everywhere I go. <laughs> there was a, a, a lady in the audience last night, front row, who was mouthing every single word with you. And those are a lot of words in that song. That was wild. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember uh, I played it for my friend Sophie. Or I read her the lyrics on the phone when I first finished it. I was like, yeah, I was on the, the fever creation high. And I was like, you got to listen mm-hmm. to this thing I did. And she's like, yeah, it's great. But no one's going to ever listen to all that. Like, you know, because like kids have no attention span today. And like, it's crazy. Uh, like so many younger people have just grabbed onto that song. And, oh, like, yeah. I think yeah. that's really cool. <laughs> so what does that say about uh, uh, where our music is at today in this country? I mean, really? Uh, all mean, over the world, actually. How do you mean? Like, well, I mean, they say on one thing, yeah, uh, people will never spend the time to listen to that. But you found, you have found an audience for it. And I think it's important because... Those there's a need for so, these songs right now. We don't have them right now, um, and um, but then you know, a, a fresh voice comes along and it, with with, some, with a lot to say, uh, and then puts it out there. And I, th- I think it's so needed today because we're in that uh, world today where uh, we want immediate right now. We want to hear my favorite song right now and go on the internet and get it right now. And if it doesn't catch my attention. Right now, I'm on to the next thing, and along comes something that's so important that slaps you in the side of the head and kind of wakes you up. And that's the kind of feeling I get here listening to your music. And um, it, it flashes back to me to the Dylan days and uh, the Arlo Guthrie, and even before that. Um, so what you do is genius, my friend. Thanks, man. Yeah. It means a lot coming from you. You've been around a while doing it, so I appreciate it, man. Yeah. You know, I talked to Kent Lazy um, earlier in the week um, on the podcast, and he's a Hall of Fame songwriter, um, you know, country music mostly, you know, the Garth Brooks hits and everything. And we talked about the Change the World songs, you know, and where they have gone today. Uh, but they're out there if you look, huh? They're buried deep. I mean, I you know I know where they are. I hear them a lot in like the underground DIY punk scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. People do write them. Um, some are better than others, of course, uh, as far as like you know what they convey and how they do it to really like get someone to resonate with it. I think, but they're mm-hmm. out there. And uh, um, you know, I just think don't think you hear much of them on the radio because I mean I don't know why I don't know, <laughs> but I think it's. The, the machine is just so big; the they don't want you to think yeah. about that kind of stuff. You know, right? I don't know, so right. <laughs> but they're there, you know. Well, you're you're paving the way. You're, you're you know you you are uh, blazing that trail, your own trail, and that's what I admire. About I'm trying that. to raise consciousness, man. You're raising consciousness. <laughs> that's a very good way to put it. Yeah, yeah man. It's like taking acid and only listening to my music. It's <laughs> a joke. Don't. Do that. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, how, how, now, how many records do you have out at this point? Uh, um, eight. Eight. Yeah. So this will be number nine coming up, May. Uh, oh, this will be number eight. This will be number eight. Yeah. What are you calling this one? And cheap shots on the rocks. <laughs> so it's a relationship album. A relationship. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you got any of those songs that you can share with us? Uh, yeah, I can play one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Sure. I'd love to hear something. This album coming out in May. Yeah. And uh, Matt Pless is our guest, and this is the Songwriter Connection podcast. I'm going to try to. I haven't played this one in a while, but uh, this is a. Uh, I didn't practice this one before the show, so uh. <laughs> we'll see what happens. This is called Black Eyed Susan. Uh, it's about uh, the girl who was sort of the centerpiece for this whole album. Uh, when we first met, I was like, her, she said her favorite flower was Black Eyed Susan's. And I was like, one day I'm going to write a song called Black Eyed Susan about you. And unfortunately, it took a year and a half for me to write it after we broke up. So uh, <laughs> I, I, was, I was good for my word, but yeah. she wasn't there to hear it. It's a different perspective than when you started then, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, was, I don't know if... Yeah, it's one of those songs that takes you two years to write, but five I minutes to... Two, two years to live, but like 15 minutes to write. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Interesting. future that could never be a dream that couldn't last between the road not taken and the straight and narrow path 
There ain't no silver linings, cause there ain't no skies of gray. Just you and I, but worlds collide when who we are starts standing in the way. In a future that we left behind, a spring that never comes, we're walking hand in hand and laughing in each other's arms. A songbird morning serenades our stable, simple life, and destiny's trajectory won't steal you from my side. But lately I've been waiting on the wayward winds to blow Down in the lonesome valley where the lovesick ramblers go With regretful heart forget-me-nots Your brown-eyed babe ain't never coming home In a future that could hardly bloom and wither all the way Tomorrow's rising sun was more than just my yesterday Sometimes you'll find your truth beyond opinions you believe And what you want tied to the loss of things you think you need But you can find me drifting where the wayward winds will blow Lost in lonesome valley reaping everything I've sown With regretful heart forget-me-nots Your brown-eyed babe ain't never coming home Brown eyed babe ain't never coming home. We fell for expectations and we stumbled on our pride. But we've knocked us down then picked us up again. So maybe give it one last try on second thought. Just say goodbye. It's where you're gonna go, not where you've been. Remember me each time you feel those wayward winds that blow. Far from a lonesome valley where the black-eyed Susans grow With regretful heart forget-me-nots Your brown-eyed babe ain't never coming home Your brown-eyed babe ain't never coming home His name is Matt Pless. That's P-L-E-S-S, Matt Pless. And um, for more on him, we can find out, uh, we've got your own webpage, and your music is out there, right? Yeah, it's on, uh, uh, you can find it. If you Google Matt Pless, that's like less with a P in front of it, you will be able to find anything you want on me from, you know, uh, Bandcamp to Spotify to iTunes to my website, mattpless.com. And all the YouTube, all that magical stuff. And if you can't find me on Google in 2022, like, I can't help you with much of anything in life because you got issues. So <laughs> Go there. Find out more about our guest. He's an amazing guy. And uh, I just love the trail that you're blazing, my friend. Where are you heading to after Nashville? Um, uh, back, to Mar- back to Maryland. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, then I'm the the... The situation is going to be a U.S. tour in nice. May and June. Around Promote that new record, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, that's what's the plan. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, back to Maryland for a bit. Then the record comes out, go on tour for two months, and uh, wow. yeah, make it back down here eventually. So, yeah. Is your favorite places when you go out on tour that you, you really must visit? Oh man, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> deal. Um, I love I love out west. You know, I love the West Coast and like um, the, the vibe of just like driving. Mm-hmm. through like utah and just like arizona oh, where you just feel like the world opens up and you're just like it's so wide that when you're driving you almost feel like you aren't going anywhere because there's just so much space around you like colorado is cool i love like fort collins tiny little hippie town like you know i love the mountains like, the, just the sky in colorado looks like you know, oh, yeah. psychedelic even if you're like sober you know it's just always like whoa you know? yeah and um yeah, yeah it's a like, good work god yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. The grand canyon you know you mm-hmm. can look you can see the soul of god at sunset there you know yeah you really so can cool. oh that's a good point yeah yeah you sit there and go wow you know and if you've never seen it and experienced it you can't explain it to another person you no. just really can't yeah just like <laughs> good look over the edge and let your spirit fall off man <laughs> that's right. <laughs> tell you that well i've enjoyed knowing a little bit more about you matt and i i can't thank you for enough for coming to my home and sharing your music with us and your thoughts um i wish you all the best and continued success cool. proud of what you've done thanks yeah man. thank you for letting me come by and do this i appreciate it yeah hey thank you for joining us on the songwriter connection podcast join us again next week we publish every wednesday morning and uh, we hope to see you for more then thank you for listening to the songwriter connection podcast 
Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.